Hello, child of God. Almighty God has set into motion numerous end-time events in our generation. Some of these events we can prep for now, and some events we cannot prep for at all. Almighty God used the prophet Ezekiel to give us several end-time messages. In the prophecies of Ezekiel 37, the whole house of Israel was restored as a nation. This was fulfilled along with many other prophecies on May the 14th, 1948. In the next chapter, in the prophecies of Ezekiel 38, we see the warning to Russia and a criminal gang of nations that Russia leads into war against Israel. Almighty God baits Russia, whom is Gog and Magog, to attack Israel and then destroys the the armies of the criminal gang of nations on the mountains of Israel. In this destruction, Almighty God sends an earthquake that shakes the entire planet. And then God sends fire and rain and hailstones and so on. The attacking armies are so stunned that they turn and destroy each other. Almighty God glorifies himself as the Savior of Israel to the entire planet. Almighty God is an intentionally invisible God and often uses acts of nature to accomplish his will. The earthquake will affect every living creature on this planet. The earthquake will cause tidal waves that may affect every seacoast on earth. The Lord Jesus Christ warned us that these end times would be as in the days of Noah. People were eating and drinking and marrying and have been carefree lives and not considering God at all. Noah had preached for 120 years for the people to repent and turn back to God, but they did not. So when the earth's crust opened and the floods rushed up and the rains came down and washed away all the people, they did not see it coming. They had not taken the prophecy seriously. They did not take Almighty God seriously and the flood killed them all except Noah and his age. I have included some news videos to show you how close we are to the world shaking earthquake and tidal waves that are coming and also the shocking things that happened to the poor victims of the recent typhoon that hit the Philippines. This is a prepper's nightmare. Iran's consistent threats to exterminate the Jews around the world and wipe Israel off the map have been taken very seriously by the Israeli government. Both Israel and Iran have been preparing for this war for many years. The religious extremists of Iran have created a Muslim army with a suicide bomber mentality. They consider Israel as Satan that must be exterminated and the USA as the great Satan which also must be destroyed. Add that to the logic of the suicide bomber mentality, the nuclear weapons, the dirty bombs, and the modern missiles, and the other horrible weapons. Iran's nuclear weapons program is the greatest threat to Israel and to the United States. Please check my evidence and respond to this video. Tell me just what you think. My theory is that Israel will attack Iran's nuclear weapons program. Iran will respond with an attack on Jewish people worldwide, especially the population of New York City and of Israel itself, including the population of Palestinians, which will just be collateral damage. In this war, both Israel and Iran will suffer serious wounds. Israel will be at her weakest point in many years. This fact will encourage several of Islam's Muslim nations to attack Israel under the leadership of their puppet master, Russia. I am now going to play some news videos from this week to show the foundation of my speculations of the near future events that we must prepare for or the suffer in. I have included the typhoon videos so that we can imagine what much of the seacoast around the world will experience. And hopefully it will encourage some of you to head away from the coast when you see Israel attack Iran. It's criticism closer to home too. We've trusted the Iranians before, just like the North Koreans on nuclear issues, and what have we gotten for it? But upon his arrival in Tehran, Mr. Zarif gave this warning. All the confidence building measures we will take are reversible and they can be reversed fast. Of course, we hope we don't have to do this. As he emphasized that Iran's nuclear sites will continue their activities and that the country's right to enrichment has been recognized, the U.S. Secretary of State was giving his version of events to an American television channel. So there is no agreement that they can enrich they have ability to negotiate it, but they could only gain that capacity to have some enrichment, as some countries do, if they live up to the whole set of terms necessary to prove it's a peaceful program. 
Washington has been keen to highlight the restrictions put on Iran's nuclear program, which include neutralizing its stockpile of near 20% uranium and halting the enrichment of uranium above 5%, which is well below the threshold needed to make nuclear weapons. The U.S. faces some opposition to the agreement. The Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has called it an historic mistake. What was concluded in uh, Geneva last night is not a historic agreement. It's a historic mistake. It's not made the world a safer place. Like the agreement with North Korea in 2005, this agreement has made the world a much more dangerous place. I know that many share the concern of Israel, especially in the region, and there's a reason for this. For years, the international community has demanded that Iran cease all uranium enrichment. Now, for the first time, the international community has formally consented that Iran continue its enrichment of uranium. And this is in direct contravention of UN Security Council resolutions. Iran is uh, taking only cosmetic steps, which it could reverse easily within a few weeks. And in return, sanctions that took years to put in place are going to be eased. Iran is going to receive billions of dollars worth in sanctions relief. So the pressures on Iran are being lifted. They're being eased. And with the lifting of this pressure, this first step could very well be the last step. Without continued pressure, what incentive does the Iranian regime have to take serious steps that actually dismantle its nuclear weapons capability? Why would it dismantle the centrifuges and the plutonium reactor? None of this is covered in the agreement. They are left intact. So Israel is not bound by this agreement. We cannot and will not allow a regime that calls for the destruction of Israel to obtain the means to achieve this goal. We will not allow Iran to have a nuclear weapons capability. Israel has uh, many friends and allies, but when they're mistaken, it's my obligation to speak out clearly and openly and say so. It's my solemn responsibility to protect and defend the one and only Jewish state. This is a hurricane machine. It's about as strong as they get anywhere on the planet. This is a Cat 5, 175 mile per hour storm closing in on the Philippines. Let's have a look at the satellite pictures and show you. It's only about 250 miles away, so probably landfall coming in about 12 to 18 hours or so, and it is going to pose a lot of hazards as it does move on, obviously with the high winds and storm surge as well. It is going to be impacting a ton of people. Look at this estimated population map here with the cone. These are in millions, 4 million, 2 million. This is a nightmare disaster that we can all learn from. Superimpose yourself your family, and your home into this nightmare and use this experience to help plan your own prepping. Things that they can expect, for example, by tonight, 115 plus mile per hour winds in places like Tacloban, which is a highly populated city on the province of Leyte. But that didn't compare with what happened here. The storm surge was the most destructive part of this typhoon. We're about 100 meters or so from the water here and you can see the damage caused. These houses, these were all rough built houses, completely flattened along the foreshore. Thousands of people live along a stretch of several kilometres and you can see behind me just how bad it must have been. Authorities had pleaded with people to leave. Many did, but many stayed. This man was searching for his father, his brothers and his uncle somewhere, he thinks, under this rubble. We all tried to leave, but it was too late. I got separated when the water started rising. I don't know what happened to them, he tells me. The devastation across the entire city of 200,000 people is widespread. Winds upward of 250 kilometers an hour, leaving a trail of destruction. Help us. This is now a city on edge. No power, food and water running out, and medical supplies almost gone. St. Paul's Hospital, we're told, is the only functioning medical facility in the city. 
They can't admit any more patients. There's no room. Just first aid in the most difficult of conditions. We have no more rooms, no more We hardly have anything left to help people with, the doctor tells me. We have to get supplies in immediately. Just a block away from the hospital, the increasingly desperate search for food and water leads to looting. This is one of the uh, few stores which is left open. And as you can see, the crowds have been forming around these stores, taking anything they can. Food is the priority at the moment, but uh, air conditioning units, plastic toys, everything is coming out of these stores. Another street away, people are climbing up a lamppost to get to the second floor of a department store to grab anything they can. It took a full day before help arrived. And even though the storm was predicted days in advance, the response so far has not been nearly enough. This was nature at its most frightening, a display of force that has smashed the lives of so many people. And this is just one city. There are countless towns up and down the coast where authorities are still waiting to hear word from. Andrew Stevens, CNN, Tacloban City, Central Philippines. And many of the people here have been walking for hours through the devastation to get here to get food and water from the military themselves. Many of them just say that they were too desperate to wait for help to get to them. It struck with terrifying and deadly force. The aftermath, Takloban City's shattered landscape. This was home to thousands. It was not the wind that did it, it was a storm surge, reports of a five metre wall of water that engulfed the coastal strip and spread through the city. Everything's destroyed, everything's gone, the only thing left are our clothes and my child. I am asking for help because I no longer have a home, I do not have any money, I do not have anything left. We need help. We do not have anything to eat. Our homes are lost. No food, no shelter, no medicine. The victims of Super Typhoon Haiyan are at their breaking point. Officials in the Philippines believe that as many as 10,000 people may have lost their lives after one of the worst storms on record destroyed homes, schools and airport buildings. Such was the force of Typhoon Haiyan that it even brought ashore a large ship in the city of Tacloban. This Typhoon Haiyan hit the Philippines with brutal and deadly force, flattening entire towns, washing away homes, and littering the streets with the dead. In the devastated city of Tacloban, this chapel has become a makeshift morgue. We have an estimate given on the casualties, more or less 10,000, according to this report. But with crews yet to reach areas cut off by flooding and landslides, the death toll could climb even higher. Haiyan is one of the worst storms ever recorded, packing winds of nearly 150 miles per hour. Enough to wash this large ship ashore on the coast of Leyte. Uh, there is uh, uh, evidence at the airfield uh, that the aid operation is picking up, but when you get into town, you see thousands of people wandering the streets trying to pick out some kind of living from uh, anything that's been left behind. These people have nothing uh, and they're trawling through the remains uh, of their city and there's no systematic distribution of aid that we can see at the moment. And while people are relying on reserves, on what was in the cupboard before this storm hit, if they can find it, that's going to run out pretty soon. And if there's more rain on the way, then this is going to become a desperate situation. But the roads are clogged with debris there are still dozens and dozens and dozens of bodies just lying unclaimed some of them have been wrapped in cloth but in many cases they're just a putrefying mass filling the air with a thick stench of death and uh, that's evidence that their relatives aren't around to recover the bodies it's evidence of just how hard this town has been hit Tacloban has been flattened this is the town's high street in the air, the stench of death. We saw dozens of bodies rotting by the roadside. Three days after the typhoon struck, and nobody to bury them. Among the debris at the city's airport, a makeshift hospital. Many of the patients being treated without anaesthetics. 
Hundreds of people have now come to the airport at Tacloban, desperate to try and get hold of any aid that's coming in. Most of them here are saying they've lost everything, their house is completely gone, and as I say, totally desperate. Now we're so very hungry and thirsty. That's why we're here, because even if so, if you have uh, water or uh, food there, maybe you can give us. But they're not being given enough. This used to be a supermarket. People who have nothing are looking for anything they can find. And without more aid, what little there is will run out soon. John Donison, BBC News, in Tacloban. My heart is broken, child of God. These people could easily be our own family members and our own friends that are in this condition. We can prepare for the catastrophic fall of the economy. We can prepare for the looters and many other disasters. We can prepare for when they open the prisons and the criminal gangs run amok. And I believe we should prepare, just as Noah prepared for God's judgment on the people of this earth. But some disasters are beyond our ability to prepare. These disasters are signs of the end times. There are now wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes everywhere. Violence covers the earth the same as it was in the time of Noah. Jesus warned us of these times, of the wars and the rumors of wars. This is a year of preparation. Regardless of which war, regardless of how the economy falls, regardless of what goes on first or second, we need to prep. We need to prep now. These times were prophesied by the Lord Jesus Christ. When you see these things happen, the things going on in Jerusalem and Israel and Zion worldwide, when you see these things manifesting, look up for your redemption is drawing near and start praying. Pray hard. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The instructions the Lord Jesus Christ gave us is that we should pray that we are able to stand before the Son of Man. My friend, no one is able to stand before the Son of Man unless he is washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are none righteous, no, not one. We have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Let us pray now together and ask Almighty God to forgive our sin and wash us in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just follow after me in prayer, but pray with your own faith and your own sincerity. Father God, that's right, just pray in faith after me. Father God, I ask you now to forgive all of my sin and wash me in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And make me holy unto you. Baptize me now in the Holy Spirit. And give me more power to resist temptations. I acknowledge that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for my sin. And is soon to return. I forgive all of those people that I have resented or hated and I receive from you the free gift of salvation. I dedicate my life and commit my spirit to you. I ask you now to keep me strong in the time of testing and help me to stand before the Son of Man. I receive that as done. Amen. Thank you for praying with me, child of God. If you'd like to see more videos on the baptism of the Holy Spirit or on end time prophecy, please click the links at the end of the arrows. May God bless you. Peace be unto your house.